Hey everybody, welcome to Buratech. So you want to make a video game, now what? Alright, welcome to Buratech. Before we start this video, I want to make sure that you like and subscribe. And if you know somebody who wants to make a video game all by themselves, please share this video with them. This channel doesn't do a Patreon, instead we sell our digital products down below. And remember that every single dollar that we get from the products that you buy below goes into making more content. Alright, so let's talk about making a video game all by yourself. Now over the years there's been a lot of really successful games and people that have made millions of dollars making a video game all by themselves. But how hard is it? Chances are, if you don't already know, a lot of games have a lot of people working on them and they take thousands to tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of man hours to make these games a success. Few people have managed to cut through that and make a game completely by themselves. So what do you really need to make a video game all by yourself? So you need to have a large differentiated skill set and the skill set is very hard to acquire. I'm one of these people that has these skill sets, so I'm gonna give you some tips on how to require the skill set. But before we talk about what, how to acquire the skill set, we need to talk about what it is. So if you wanna make a video game, you need to learn programming. This is the number one thing you need to understand. Now, over the years, there has been some great artists that learned to code, and there's been a lot of different people from a lot of different backgrounds that have learned to code and make a game. Just because you didn't do good in a programming class in high school or junior high or wherever, doesn't mean you won't be good at it now. You have to try it again and again. Sometimes if you went to a class and it wasn't a really good class or the teacher wasn't really good and that experience will taint your programming experience. So programming is the number one thing you need to learn and luckily for you there's lots of content out there. Hint hint you can buy the courses down below. In addition to making a good game, you need to know how to make the art. Now there's many ways that you can do this. You can use Photoshop, you can use Adobe Illustrator, you can use a pixel art editor, or you can use a 3D program like Blender or 3ds Max or Maya. If you want to make a 3D game, it's going to be a lot harder. It's going to be exponentially harder to get a 3D game out the door than 2D. The reason is, is that 3D is really hard to make art assets and it's hard to actually program. So a lot of you are probably thinking, well, I can't be a tech technical programmer and an amazing artist. These are just two completely separate ideas. Well, not always. Believe it or not, being technical and being artistic are not opposite sides of the same coin. In fact, they complement each other in many ways. In fact, some of the best engineering schools force their students to learn a classical instrument. And after building a lot of projects and after coding through lots of projects, creativity is a very much a part of programming. Now, of course, there are some parts of programming where it's completely technical and there are people that can do this technical work that don't have a single creative element in their body. But for the most part, if you pick a nice aesthetic, you can actually do really good art even if you aren't really that creative. Remember that being creative is almost as hard as being really technical. And that's where I think some of the people have confusion is that there are really good artists that won't be technical and there are really good technical people that could never be artists. But chances are you can learn the concrete fundamentals of both of these two disciplines and become really good at it. Naturally, you might be better at one or the other and you just have to double down on the skill that you're not as good at. You have to spend more time with that skill because it will take you longer. Personally, I am not extremely technical or extremely creative, but I am somewhere in the middle. So in addition to the programming and the art, you need to learn a few other skills as well. Music is another one, and music is often seen as this insanely creative task that you need to be able to do. Believe it or not, you can actually make really good music with not a lot of skills. In fact, remember, I produced a game in seven hours where I literally did everything, and you can check out the video right here. In that video, I told people that if you want to make electronic music, it is the easiest to do. And this is really something that you need to understand if you want to make a game by yourself. So electronic music is one of the easiest forms of music to produce, and I highly recommend that you do it. I personally like using FL Studio, which is one of the easiest ways that you can make music. Now the other thing when it comes to music is the sound effects. Now I personally don't like making sound effects because they are extremely time consuming. Most of the sound effects made in Hollywood movies have teams around them and they use very convoluted ways of getting that sound effect. For example, if you ever see someone punch someone and it makes a cracking sound, that's a mic in lettuce 
hit with a hammer. So a lot of these sound effects are very hard to produce and they're actually extremely time consuming if you don't know what you're doing. I personally like buying my sound effects because buying my sound effects or finding CC0 sound effects is the best and easiest way to add sound effects to your game. So let's say you've done a lot of tutorials on programming, you've done a lot of tutorials on art, and you've done some tutorials on music. Now what do you do? Well, first of all, you have to prototype a game, and I would recommend spending a certain amount of time to try and prototype a concept that's easy to do. And I would recommend doing as many prototypes as humanly possible. The reason is, is that with every single prototype that you do, the better you get at development. Remember that game development is a process, not necessarily just one specific task especially if you wanna make a game all by yourself. So if you go through 10 prototypes or 10 iterations of an idea, you'll find out A, what worked right, B, what didn't work right, and C, my personal favorite, is how to do that again, but faster. This is really the trick. If you're making a game by yourself, game development is inherently difficult and you wanna make it as easy as possible. Also, you wanna do it as quickly as possible. A lot of people might not wanna hear that, but there are lots of games that have been canceled just because it simply took too long. You wanna pick a project that you can actually get out the door. And doing that rapid prototyping process that is making something and then starting it new again will help you get that game out the door. In fact, if you really wanna make a game, I would recommend making a small, simple game first just to publish it and get the experience of publishing an actual game. If you wanna make a huge game like some of these solo indie developers have made, I would recommend that being your second or third project just so that you can iron out the kinks. There's nothing worse than making a huge project and realizing that you've made a ton of mistakes along the way. Another thing that can absolutely kill a solo project is bad code. So after the release of my first Xbox 360 game, I wanted to make another one. In fact, it was a week after I released my first game where I wanted to work on my second game. And I made it over six months and I basically said one day, this is not gonna work. And the reason is, is that I had sloppy development and the code was incredibly bad. It was so bad that it could never have been released. So, even though it takes an extra few seconds to clean up your code, I highly recommend you do that. It will kill your project if your code base becomes unmanageable. If your code base becomes unmanageable, completely scrap the project and start a new one. It can be the exact same project, but this time the code is gonna be good. Another thing that killed that particular game was the scope got bigger and bigger. So when you make a game, you want to add things to make it better. This is very logical and lots of people do that. You wanna add in an extra power up, an extra ability, an extra feature. Well, the thing is, is that when you add a feature, the game changes, like the actual fundamental mechanics change of the game and the overall scope changes. And if you add three items, it's not gonna take you three times longer to get out the door. It could take you six, nine, or 20 times longer because of the nature of games. You wanna make sure that your scope is relatively contained before you even start your big project. So for example, if you wanna make a game, let's say a point and click adventure game, that's a really good game to do because you'll know what the scope is. And if you wanna, let's say, make it five chapters, you can go ahead and plan out those five chapters and you can plan out everything that's in it. And then you make the game. Now along the way, you might wanna add in five more, but maybe that might kill your project because you've doubled the length of your game. Remember, game development is inherently difficult and if you're not spending significant amounts of your personal time, it's never gonna come out the door. On that note, how do you actually spend your personal time making a game? Now, it's very difficult if you're going to school or have work or you have a bunch of different other obligations in life. The way that you get your personal game out the door is that you need to set aside some time and you have to take something out of your life in order to set aside the time to do that. Now, chances are, if you wanna make video games, then you probably play video games. Well, instead of playing video games, you should make video games. So if you spend an hour or two playing a video game, then perhaps you should spend at least half of that time making a video game. Or you can just go cold turkey and not play video games and just make games from now on. The younger you are, the easier it is to do this. For example, if you're in college and you have summers off, perhaps you should intern at your own company and invest in yourself by making a game. Most college students have four months off, and if you're living at home, I would recommend just making a game, but you have to actually release something before you go to school the next year. You have to release. This is the key part that you need to understand, and this is why I always recommend releasing one or
or two projects before your big project. Because once you figure out how to release one or two projects, you'll realize all the pitfalls and all the realistic realities of making games. And by the time you get to your third project, you will have understand so much. So by going through that process, there's lots of things that you'll learn. You'll learn what code takes a long time to code. You'll learn what art is easy to do. You'll learn about the aesthetics of your game. And furthermore, you'll actually get feedback of your game too, which is something that you really need to do. The more feedback that you get on your game as early on, the better your game will be. Now it's really hard to say, I've spent 20 hours on this game and have someone completely give you bad advice on it. Now this is really hard even today when I present my business or a product that I've made to a bunch of industry experts, sometimes they just completely tear it apart. But I have done this for at least a decade and I'm used to it. I more than anyone know how hard it is to take your work that you spent your personal time on that you could have been doing anything else with and to give it to some people only to have them completely critique it and perhaps give you some very harsh critiques. So on the note of critiques, there are some people who will give you some very valuable constructive criticism and there will be other people that will completely crap over your idea just because they're terrible people. You have to understand that critiquing something is way easier than actually building something. Now there will be people that will give you great advice in life and chances are this advice will be well met from you because it will be delivered in such a great way. You can find out the toxic people because they will Will absolutely tell you it's a terrible idea without much explanation. And if they do give you an explanation, they might be comparing your indie game to a mega blockbuster. Remember, these games that a lot of people play have multi-million dollar budgets, and some of these games cost upwards of 200 million. You are not in that bracket, and you have to understand when people play your game, they might be comparing it to that. And if they're comparing it to a $200 million game, there's no way you can win. One thing that you can say to these people is, what was the last game that you played that was made by one person? And if they don't have an answer, then they might be just crapping over your idea just because they're a toxic person. The last thing that we need to talk about is success. Success is really hard to attain. Even as an entrepreneur for a long time, I understand that I can release a product and it will completely fail for some random reason. If your game is not successful, that is nothing to say about you as an individual and it will say nothing about your future success. You have gone through a process that few people have if you release a game. And if you release a game, you'll have way better experience than some entry level job. If you make a product and release it on your own, you as a person will be more successful in the long run. I guarantee it. And if it is a success, well then you can go buy a yacht and retire today. All right, so that wraps up this video. If you know somebody who wants to be a game developer, then I highly recommend that you share this video with them. There's a lot of information that they will absolutely need if they wanna make a game all by themselves. And if you really like this channel, you can check out our products down below. Remember, this channel doesn't do a Patreon. Instead, we sell our digital products. And if you really like this channel, you can subscribe to all of our content and the links are all down below. Remember that every single dollar that we get from the courses and the products that you buy below goes into making more content. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in another video.